Hi there, I hope you're well. In this video, I'll be taking a look at the pros and cons of using an MFT style bench versus a rail square to get cuts that are straight and square. I'm Peter Millard, and on this channel, I make 10 minute ish videos about woodwork projects, the occasional accessory or tool review, and I pass along some handy workshop tips and know how. And if you're new here, do consider subscribing. There's a 10 minute subscribe logo just down there in the corner. It's okay, it doesn't actually take 10 minutes. Uh, now, regular viewers will know that I'm a long term track saw or plunge saw fan, and track saws are incredibly useful bits of kit, and in my opinion, hands down the easiest way to get a straight, clean cut with a clean edge, especially if you're relatively new to woodworking and or working out of a relatively small workspace where taking the tool to the workpiece makes a lot of sense. One of the most common questions that I get regularly about track saws is about which way folks should go when they decide they want to step up their game a little bit and put something in place to get a square cut. Getting a square cut, that's one of the fundamentals of woodworking or cabinet making. It's easily achievable, though there are a few ways of doing it at very different price points, but also with benefits and drawbacks to each approach, which is what I'm going to explain in this video. Now the risk of stating the obvious, if you only need to make these cuts infrequently then a simple plywood reference square like this one that you can make yourself with your track saw does a great job or you could make yourself a square that attaches to your rail, a DIY rail square as I did recently for this uh, entry level track saw from Lidl. Of course if you're feeling spendy there are always commercial versions of these products too. This is a bench dogs rail square that's available for most common guide rail types or you can go the whole hog and step up to a full blown Festool MFT or multi-function table like this one with a hinged rail that swings out of the way when not in use. Now make no mistake, the MFT is a pricey piece of kit and offers uses far beyond getting a square straight cut. I've done a few videos on the MFT, so be sure to check them out. There's links down below. But if your main interest is in simply getting something cut to length, nice and square, then there are ways of doing this at a much lower price than a full blown MFT. And I think that's where I'll start at the cheapest commercially available option. If you don't know, an MFT style top has a grid of 20mm holes on 96mm centres, please don't ask. I'll leave a link down below to a thread on a forum that attempts to explain why it's on 96mm centres, just accept that it is. Uh, this grid of holes is absolutely perfectly square and is usually made on a CNC machine that costs more than your car certainly more than mine. Uh, Festool will sell you an original replacement MFT top as a spare part or you can buy these tops from lots of third parties or have a go at making one of your own. There are loads of templates and guides available and plenty of videos about it on YouTube. I'll link a couple of them up down in the video description and I will be having a go at making my own soon for my portable bench build. If you don't want to miss that then be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell to enable notifications. So you've got your MFT top with its grid of holes and if you've got your track saw all you really need to get cross cutting are a set of bench dogs. Some of the bench dogs co UK products that I'm showing here have been supplied for review and I may earn from qualifying sales so don't forget to use the offer code 10 minute workshop for a 5% discount across the board at bench dogs co UK. There's a link down in the video description as well. So a couple of taller bench dogs in a column like this for the rail to bear against and a couple of shorter ones in a row like this for the workpiece and you're basically in business for a clean square cut and that's about as cheap a commercial solution as you can get. So what's the downside of this setup? Well fairly obviously if you're making repeat cuts there's no fence so no flag stop. You either have to measure and mark each piece individually or clamp up some kind of stop to the bench top. There's also no support under the rail beyond the workpiece so it helps to have a piece of scrap available the same thickness as the work. And the squareness of the cut relies on you keeping the rail hard against the taller bench dogs. Sometimes the rail and workpiece can creep a little bit as you're cutting. If you find that to be a problem then you can buy a variety of little spring clips that connect to the rail and keep it snugged against the bench dogs. These ones are the UJK ones from Axminster. There's a link to these down below as well. Uh, the alternative to the tall bench dogs is to use rail dogs. These are tall dogs that attach directly to your guide rail so no need to mess around with those little spring clips. They locate precisely in the MFT top though this precision can make them a little fiddly to fit and remove. I'd recommend leaving one rail dog slightly loose. It makes fitting them into the column of holes much easier. 
And once it's located, you can tighten it up from underneath. One slight niggle with these is that they have a tendency to drop down onto the bench top. And because they're so precise, they can be a bit of a pain to pick up again. One solution to that is these bench dog collars or bee collars that fit snugly around the dogs and prevent that from happening. And these rail dogs have lines scribed onto them that correspond to common material thicknesses that makes them easy to set up. You may tend to find that this kind of solution is better for longer cutting sessions if you need to swap between cutting and getting the bench back for something else. Then I'd probably stay with the taller bench dogs personally, as I do find them easier to fit and remove. Of course, with both the rail dogs and bench dogs options, you can always add a fence to this setup. The bench dogs fence dogs are a great solution to this as they make it easy to add and remove the fence complete with flag stops so that you can interrupt your cutting session to clear the bench if you need to then get back to it knowing that your cuts will still be accurate there are other fence solutions available of course and i'd encourage everybody to consider all the options carefully to make sure your needs are met for the money that you're paying now, one drawback with the bench dog or rail dog method is that fairly obviously your front to back cut or cross cut is restricted by the dogs themselves. And on a standard MFT top like this one, your capacity is reduced to around 550 mil or 530 mil if you decide to go with the fence. Of course, you can always turn the MFT top around. You'll get a longer cross cut with the MFT in portrait mode, but that carries the risk of pushing the fence or workpiece dogs off the edge of the top so you'd need to use the holes that are closer together when what you really want to do is keep those reference points as far as part as possible where you can. So where does the rail square fit into all this? Well, it's a much more compact, independent solution. You can dispense with the MFT style top altogether as the square guarantees a square cut and your cross cut capacity is only limited by your rail length within reason. I haven't tried it, but I have heard of guys happily using this rail square to cut full sheets with a long rail. I don't think I'd be brave enough to try that without a bit of double checking with a tape measure or a sliding square. But I've certainly made a cross cut on a full sheet with a 1400 mil rail and it was absolutely spot on. So what are the disadvantages of a rail square? Well, you do need a straight edge for it to bear against. And the fact that it's an independent solution means that you can't generally use it with a fence system. So you're typically back to measuring and marking individual pieces. I know my YouTube pal Stu over the Bish Bash Bosch channel has made a parallel guide for his rail square, which is one way around it, though it does seem to make for a fairly large and to my mind slightly unwieldy looking piece of kit. But I may have a go at making one for my homemade rail square just for fun. This commercial square from Bench Dogs does have another trick up its sleeve though, which are what they call MFT adapters. The base of the square is threaded to accept tapered dogs that fit precisely into the MFT hole pattern, and they can be used in conjunction with bee collars, bench dogs, or the full fence system if that's what you fancy. Bear in mind though that if you do use the bee collars with either the MFT dogs or rail dogs, it's probably a good idea to have a set of these slightly fatter bench dogs to hand just for the workpiece to bear against. Now we started out in this video at the cheapest commercial solution and we've ended up looking at options that could well set you back a fair few quid and I think it's important to recognise that all we're trying to do here is get you an accurate square cut with your track saw. Remember you can absolutely do this with nothing more than a homemade square from a piece of plywood or a DIY rail square but these commercial products that we've looked at today do make things easier, much more repeatable and a little more appropriate to any workplace where you need to crack on with the cutting. As I said when I reviewed the Bench Dogs Rail Square, these MFT adapters were the things that really sold me on this system to use as the basis for my forthcoming mobile bench build. That project is coming in the very near future, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to ring the bell to be notified when it's posted. I'll leave it there for this week. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a big thumbs up or leave me a comment down below. And as always, I want to say thanks so much to my Patreon supporters for their amazing support. Come and join the Patreon party at patreon.com forward slash 10 minute workshop and check out the additional exclusive content or behind the scenes videos. And it's feedback from my Patreon supporters that's played an active part in the design of my portable bench build. So do come along and join in and see what we're up to. Uh, that's it for this week though. Thanks again for watching. Stay safe, take care, and I'll see you next time.